he did that and he survived and lived to tell the tale. And of course, that was part of our effort internally to communicate to people within Nokia that we needed to change our strategy. We needed to consider options that we had never before considered. And by the way, we needed behaviors and attitudes and ways that we work to fundamentally change that yesterday's way of doing things in this rapidly changing world was no longer good enough. So what we were doing during this time was essentially considering three strategic alternatives for Nokia. The first alternative was to essentially say, continue to build our own software platform, something known as Symbian and a successor called Migo. Continue with that and try and build this ecosystem. Try and build the third ecosystem, essentially by ourselves. Now, Nokia is a company with huge resources around the world. And yet, in this rapidly changing world, you need even more. But we did spend a tremendous amount of time meeting literally with every one of our competitors, every significant operator around the world, technology companies all over the planet. I think we checked in at the six week period where we were really focused on this first option and building our own ecosystem. There were 57 trips on airplanes lasting more than three hours. It's just unbelievable. That's what had to be done. Because of course the platform's burning. Remember the burning platform? Like, you gotta make some decisions because we're moving quickly. So we had that first option. Just something just came on there. We had that first option. The second option that we faced was to do something jointly with Microsoft. And as the story has now been written, that was the choice um, that we selected. The third choice, Android. Jump onto this rapidly growing platform alternative. Now we created a very interesting dynamic in the industry. Because of course, everyone looked at Nokia and said, there's the big dog. What are they going to do? Are they going to continue on their own? Are they going to go Microsoft? Are they going to go Android? Most stories started to pick up steam in the press. And there were all sorts of rumors of being visiting Google and meeting Steve Ballmer and all of these different things, the majority of which were true. That's what we were doing. Now, what was actually happening is we were running a process of keeping all three of these options going simultaneously. And you can imagine the amount of effort required to push all three options through all of the evaluation, everything that was necessary. You have to think about the implications of our decision. If we had selected Android, they have, depends on how you measure, 25, 30% market share right now in the smartphone industry. If we had taken over the next two years our 25 to 30% market share and combined it with theirs, Think about what the mobile industry would look like for the next decade. Apple, Android, let's say 70% market share. An amazing shift in the dynamics and competitive nature of the mobile environment. Now, of course, that's something Google was quite interested in. They would like to see Android have 70% or more market share. And so the negotiations there were quite interesting, as you can imagine, in terms of encouraging us to go in that direction. Now think about it from the Microsoft. They had two things that they were thinking about most. One is with this fast growing thing called Android, Microsoft, who critically needs success in the mobile environment, in part to complement Microsoft Windows and everything else they do that generates the source of so much profit for them. They need success in mobility. And of course, the problem they were having is Android was doing all of their best work for Android, because that's where the action was. And so for them, if nobody made a decision to go with Microsoft, our market share, our software, our services, our hardware plus their software could turn in this whole thing into a three horse race. Of course, they had another consideration, and that was, boy, what happens if Nokia goes Android? Bad news for Microsoft. Very bad news for Microsoft. And therefore, as a result of the conversations with Microsoft, we're also very interested in the dynamic and you know, lots of fun because you know, obviously we're working multiple options in parallel all the way up to February 10th. The evening of February 10th, um, our board of directors met for um, several hours. Obviously, we had many meetings with our board of directors, where the management team made its final recommendation in terms of essentially what we should announce at 8 o'clock February 11th. And so that night, the decision was made that we would pursue the Microsoft partnership. We had, of course, in parallel negotiated a massive collection of terms and conditions, commitments, and things like that. Hours and hours and hours of teams of people working together to pull this together. 
So we stood on stage on February 11th and said, here is our strategy as a company. We're making this decision. Now, for those of you who follow at least the mobile industry a little bit, this is arguably the biggest announcement in years in terms of the future of the industry. Because all of a sudden, it is a three-horse race. All of a sudden, people are saying, no, Jim, you're a leader in the industry, and you've shown that you intend to continue to be a leader. Now, the strategy that we announced, which is sort of summarized up here on the screen, really has three pillars to it. All of the press, maybe even everything I've talked about today, has been about the first pillar, Nokia plus Microsoft. Because there's just so much industry interest in the smartphone segment. What hasn't been written a lot about, and I will talk more about, is a strategy we call the next billion, where there are literally billions of people who have not yet had their first digital experience. And it represents half of our business as a company to serve those people. So an area where we're increasing investment. And then the third area, future disruptions, is a statement that says, for whatever is going on in the market today, <clears throat> Android, Apple, Windows Phone, all of that, there's going to be something tomorrow. And we have to make the investments to continue to drive and to innovate and to push forward to make sure that we are, are if you like, I shall tell you a story that came out of Finland. I was given a Finnish analogy for this, and that is, the hunters say, you have to shoot ahead of the duck. So the duck is flying, you aim ahead of the duck, you hit the duck. And that was a Finnish proverb or statement that was given to me in English. And I used that statement on stage on February 11th when we talked about this and said, I'm going to shoot ahead of the duck. But of course, there were Finnish reporters there who mistranslated it back, who said, Evop says going to shoot duck in the head. <laughs> <laughs> it didn't play tough in Finnish society. <laughs> so there's been a few cultural adaptation moments that were working. So clearly, we identified a number of key elements of the strategy. But if anyone were to ask me, what's the important thing, most important thing up there in terms of that strategy, I would tell you it's the bottom box to change how we operate. And indeed, this is the hardest challenge. We have to change how we empower people to get decisions made. Nokia had become too slow moving. There were too many decisions left to large groups of people who would meet at great length and not actually come to the decision. So we needed clear accountability, clear decision making, a really aggressive way of getting things done. So there's a whole series of things that we're doing to fundamentally change how we operate as a company. And as much as the engineering, the technology, all of that is very interesting, nothing matters more than how you actually lead people through changing the way they operate. So, significant disruption introduced by Nokia. Significant disruption of the entire perspective of the future of the mobile industry. One of the things that we all have to think about is when you make a decision like that, you're going to disrupt. You're going to do something radically different. You're going to have people say, what were they thinking? Or other people saying, best move ever in the history of mobile, whatever. You have to think about your approach to disruption. There's a concept that, that a number of us developed, and I really championed it at a number of places where I worked over the last few years, that I want to talk to you about. And that is a term called constructive disruption. The idea behind constructive disruption, if you think about those two words, they're deliberately in conflict or balance or however you want to say it. Constructive disruption. The disruption part says, for example, in the case of Nokia, we are fundamentally going to change how we build products, how we deliver them, how we sell them, what we're trying to do, how we accomplish them, how we work, how we operate. All of that has fundamentally got to change. We're going to adopt someone else's platform. We're going to stop work on, on things we're doing in favor. That All of that's going to change. But at the same time, we have an obligation to the tens of thousands of employees to literally hundreds of millions of customers around the world to take them through this change with us. So it's fine for me to say, hey, we're going to change everything. But you've got to think about the, for example, in our Symbian platform, there's about 200 million people using a Symbian device today, just today alone. Last quarter, we sold 28 and a half million more of those. Huge numbers of people who depend on us for this. So at the same time that you're significantly disrupting, you have to think about, how do I do this in a way that brings everybody along for the ride? 
And so there's a huge bit of thought given to that pattern of moving through that disruption and striking the right balance. Because it does us no good if we leave some hundreds of millions of customers behind or 120,000 employees confused or whatever the case may be. You have to bring everything, everyone through that. So that's something that we think a great deal about. Now, as you think about our strategy and these three pillars of the strategy, a critical thing that we've looked at and really thought about is how do we make sure in each of those pillars of the strategy we can fundamentally differentiate. We can actually be different than everybody else. When people say, why did you go Microsoft and not Android? The fundamental reason was because we believe we could maintain sustainable differentiation with Microsoft where we would not be able to do it in the Google environment. Fundamental reason behind all of that. So let's talk a little bit about that differentiation, that innovation that we'll be applying. First of all, in the context of the work that we'll be doing with Microsoft around our smartphones, clearly what we're doing is taking the most iconic hardware development efforts on the planet, which are well world-renowned for that effort, bringing it together with Microsoft's underlying Windows Phone platform. And we are both contributing the services necessary to build that alternative ecosystem. So at Nokia, for example, you may not know this, but the vast majority of maps that are out there, electronic maps, internet-based maps, are delivered by Nokia through a, a company that's part of our family called Navtech. Location-based services is a critical area if you think about everything that's going on in the mobile world. And I said earlier that in mobility, we're just beginning to see some of the new applications that may exist in the mobile world, that that future exists. Location-based examples are one of the principal examples that we use. The fact that a mobile device knows where you are, who you like to talk to, who you don't like to talk to, because you always say ignore when they call. They may know something about your body temperature, the humidity, they may know your, obviously they know your precise location, all of those things. What we're doing with Microsoft from an innovation perspective is saying, we're going to build that alternative ecosystem and we're each going to contribute the critical assets necessary to deliver remarkable innovation around that. So that's part of, of what we're doing. But of course, hardware itself is also a critical differentiator. We have today the world's finest technology as it relates to cameras and optics, photography, video, and so forth. We have a device called the Nokia N8, which is the world's leading uh, smartphone platform with camera technology. Just amazing photographic capability. And you think about, so, okay, he's saying that the new era of mobility, the new disruption is just beginning. How does that relate to photography, for example? Well, we're gonna give you an example of that. We're gonna show you a short video that gives you an example of how innovation in hardware combined with software and services can lead to some interesting innovation in this space. But look at the possibilities if, for example, precise position information is known. I mean precise, as you saw this. By the way, this isn't fantasy video. This is working technology that we demonstrate. Something just in its infancy. But you think about, okay, so how is that so disruptive? Okay, great, I can find my bag that I left next to the umbrella stand and things like that. But you also have to think through all of these changes we're going, what's also changing is how we make money at this business. Nobody makes money by selling phones. I mean, that's our principal source of revenue and profit. But when you think about something like that, what's the business opportunity? The business opportunity is for the store who is selling the umbrellas to put an ad saying, you buy an umbrella now, you know, $5 off or whatever. And that may sound odd, but it's remarkable how rapidly the world is shifting to those types of advertising-based business models. Of course, Google is a great example of that. That's, you know, that's what's driving the business today on a larger scale. But the opportunity for local-based advertising, for messages that are uniquely custom, to, uh, customized to you, is remarkable. And of course, businesses are willing to pay for that, and companies like Nokia and others intend to profit from that. So a huge disruptive opportunity. So now I'm going to do a complete shift of gears on you. For all of the excitement in North America, here in Hamilton, for example, about smartphone technology, and everyone's got the latest device, and I want one of those, and my son wants two of those, and you know, all of that type of thing. It is the case that there's a much larger world out 